moved from sales into sort of education and teaching and that sort of field. So with the PowerPoint presentation I've done, one thing I've learned from teaching is uh, it, how to make it quite interactive. So uh, forgive me for using that sort of teaching method, but it's I, I found it, it works quite well. So I will just share my screen. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to get job hunting results, because that's after all why we're here. We, we want the reason I uh, Enka mentioned about uh, me having a sales background. I am good at uh, chasing down opportunities and closing them. And that is broadly what you have to do in job hunting. So let's get into it. And I'd like to start unusually with a book recommendation. Normally I put this at the end, but uh, this book is a sort of job hunters Bible. It's called What Color Is Your Parachute? They update it every single year and it's one of those great books that you, I read it about 15 years ago, and yet it's, it's tried and tested knowledge. So it really is applicable and it really does work. So if you're thinking job hunting only costs five, 10 quid, I bought dozens of copies for my friends. So yeah, I'd recommend this book fully. With every job hunting decision, you have two choices. Do you go with quantity, which is, the fish on the left or the or quality, which is the fish on the right, the big fish. And you will always find you have to make this sort of choice. I mean, ideally, it'd be lovely if you could have both of them and you can to an extent, but you always have to uh, make a choice which one you're going to go for and how you're going to do it. And think of, well, I'll go into it in a minute. What? One word, if you, uh, I just realized the panel may be getting in the way of the question. What one word sums up effective job hunting for you? And as I said, I like doing interactive sessions. So asking the audience, anyone want to put their hand up? What one word sums up effective job hunting? If you were to condense it down into a word. Anyone want to hazard a guess? Uh, Adam. <laughs> Interactive. It feels like it's two way. <laughs> That's quite Rather a good than word, just firing, yes. just firing off CVs. Yes, yes. That that's uh, part of it. You want to ultimately uh, win. Uh, it's partly about winning the other, winning over the other person, but it's also about getting the right fit. And um, so, yeah, interactive is a good word. Sandra, I'd say um, customized. Customize. Yes, yes. So definitely, um, what's that that joke about? Uh, you're, you're you're unique, just like everyone else is. Uh, so, uh, but but definitely customised because that brings out your unique qualities that you want people to to see in you. So thank you very much for those two answers. And if we go back to and those... Andra, I think Andra was. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, and Paul as well. Uh, I'll, because in the interest of time, I'll, I'll just pick three at a time. So um, if we go for, uh, so, sorry, Paul, I'll pick you later, I'm sure. Uh, Andra. Oh, I was just saying persistent and that not to give up if you encounter difficulties or failure. Persistence. Yes, that's a very good one. Um, yes, I'll, I'll allude, allude to that later, but yeah, hunting. Again, the quantity method does require a lot of persistence. So I'll go into that in a, a minute. So uh, basically uh, what I'm uh, driving at here, although those were excellent answers, um, cu customizing and uh, ma making it uh, interactive and, uh, and, and yes. Uh, so the, the what, uh, what color is your parachute says, is alternatives. And it means it in three broad senses, but this is the core of the book. It says alternative job hunting methods, which we'll go into in the presentation, alternative options you can use. Again, we'll go into that later on. And last of all, broader alternatives that may be more fruitful. And you have to forgive me, I've just converted to veganism. So sorry about all the fruit metaphors. Uh, the first section was about uh, 
the uh, alternatives job hunting methods. So if we go into the quantity methods first, and quantity is again the, the one where you're trying to catch many fish. And as Andra said with persistence, um, this is the, the, the way I would approach this is eat that frog. And there's a very good book by Brian Tracy who Paul talked about. And this doesn't mean, it. don't take this literally, obviously, but what, what it means is if you eat a frog first thing in the day, it's the worst thing that's gonna to happen to you that day. And what that metaphor means is do the toughest thing at the start of the day. It's easy with job hunting to loaf on the internet, to loaf online, to sit around, to do very little. And when you do start to do something soft and easy, but do the tough things first, do the difficult things. And then that makes all the other stuff easier. Don't literally eat frogs, but do do the tough things first when you're doing job hunting as, as a bit of advice, especially if you're using the quantity method. So the first quantity method is phone canvassing. And Sandra was talking about with searching for opportunities. What I do with this is get a simple spreadsheet like I have here and just throw it in the spreadsheet. What I've done with this color coding is, and I've deleted, I had to delete some of the data, but um, if you look at this top color coding, um, you start off with a lead that's generally something like active and warm because you've spoken to them, you've applied to it, it's an active and warm one that you want to pursue. You then want to, if it's a good lead, push it upwards. So if it's, uh, if they've got a role for you, brilliant, push that up to yellow uh, and then interviews and all the way up the chain. If on the other hand, if it's rubbish, engage, kick it down the chain or uh, th this is how you focus on the really, really good alternatives. Quantity method B, and this is often not popular with job hunters, but it is a good method. That is canvassing. What I mean by that is going and seeing businesses physically, which when I wrote this presentation, I thought was not possible, but I actually went out jogging just now and Cowley Road, it, you'd be surprised how many businesses are actually open. I thought in lockdown they'd all be closed, but there's loads of businesses open right now. So obviously do use social distancing and masks and so on, but you can go and canvas a business. If you have a car, that's great, you can go further. And the reason I've chosen a picture of a bike is uh, you can easily get a bike, you can easily get everywhere. I've been reading a book about France. They, France was only truly mapped out and discovered about a hundred years ago because of the bike, hence the Tour de France. But uh, with, with, with France, it, 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 it was explored by bike and a bike is a great way of getting around places like Oxford or Oxfordshire. And the third method, similar to the first method of phone canvassing related to it is agencies. And for this, another bit of interaction, I would like you to think how many agencies, first of all, there are in Oxford. So 01865, numbers with 01865. And second, within 30 miles of Oxford. And bear in mind, this is a spreadsheet I've been compiling over years. How many do you reckon are First of all, in Oxford, anyone got a guess on that? Just ballpark figure. 50? 50. That, that, that's a, a lot. A lot. <laughs> that's more sort of what you'd find with the second answer. But, uh, but yes, uh, there's broadly about, uh, what I've got is seven, but I think there must be about 10 or so. So there's, there's not many in Oxford, but there are quite a few. Uh, and uh, with Oxfordshire, I kind of gave the answer away. It's kind of, uh, it's 37 I've got, but I'm sure you could get 40 or 50. That, uh, and it, there's many, many different towns within 30 miles. So you'd be surprised. And the reason I mention this is an easy method of job hunting. One of the alternatives is just going to all these agencies and registering with them. Simple as that. You go and visit them, you go and register with them. It's kind of actually a combination of telephone canvassing and canvassing. You just ring, either ring them up or visit them and then follow up. Simple as that. Then we move on to quality job hunting methods. And uh, this, uh, the shorthand for this is to find yourself. What I've found in years of job hunting 
is that the more you know what you're after, the more success you will have. Simple as that. So, and it's not, I, I, it's not one of those ethereal things where, oh, you need to find yourself. It actually has practical application. The, the, quali the quality methods are all about this. So the first method is ask a friend. Paul, Paul was talking about networking and uh, that's broadly this approach. And my, my uh, view on it is uh, that, that there's two things to bounce off. Don't, don't on the one hand treat it like a quantity method. Don't just rattle through your friends because that doesn't work. And also it's, it's friends are not like that. Friend, that's not what friends are for. Um, but on the other hand, don't be scared to ask them. So don't be um, insensitive, but don't be afraid. So somewhere in the middle, be, be, be sensitive. If you feel a calling to ask a friend uh, for a vacancy, Rachel, who was our club president uh, before me, was um, uh, she got a job at Google through LinkedIn, through I think she asked a friend and asked her network. So Paul is right, Net networks equals network. Quantity method, quality method B, apologies, is your dream company or organization. So it's worth thinking about where you want to work and just think of five companies you really want to work for. Um, if, if I was to answer this question, there's a comp the thing I found is on social media, you have companies that pop up. And if you feel a little bit excited about them, that's a company you should maybe try. And one I've, be, I've seen is a company called Vegan Markets, which may not be a perfect one to apply for at the moment because they run outdoor markets, but uh, that, that's the sort of thing. If it excites you, then apply for them. It doesn't matter if they don't have vacancies online, just ask them. And quantity method, quality method C, again, with the finding yourself. Why are you here? What do you want to do long-term? The more you can identify on this, the better. That's uh, the third method. So part two is uh, what alternative options are you pursuing on job hunting? And this is again, the key word being alternatives. So whenever you think about whatever you're doing, think if there's another option. The shorthand for this is one of my favorite phrases, think like a Martian. And this is from the science communicator, Richard Feynman, who in my opinion is one of the great greats of of science uh, communication. He said the easiest person to fool is oneself. So you, you can easily think, oh, I'm doing the best method. I'm uh, doing the, employing the best options, doing the best things, but you're kidding yourself. You, you've got to occasionally think, can I try this? Uh, can I get outside my comfort zone and try this different method or this different method or, or explore this or explore that? Always worth considering. And, uh, so with options, the first thing to consider is, are you in the right location? I have heard this phrase in Oxford that Oxford has um, Birmingham wages and London prices. But I think, I don't think that's true. I think you can earn a London wage in Oxford and pay Birmingham prices. And all you have to do is find the right job for you, find the right location. If you can get there's plenty of well-paid jobs in Oxford. There's plenty of well-paid jobs in London, in the Southeast, all over the place. So consider what location is the first option. Second option uh, to consider is which sector. So public, private, charities, then with uh, subsections within that. So uh, do you want to work in construction? As with me, education, sales, uh, any sector you want to think of, health, uh, you, you think of which sector you want to work for, and then that, that gives you a number of options. Pick two or three. With skills, this is how you can get quite creative because you can take, you see this word cloud, something like this, you can take any, any couple of these skills. So I've got, uh, if you've got skills in say multitasking and being a leader and uh, in let's say handling conflict, uh, then I don't know, you could work, uh, and uh, just off the top of my head, you could work in politics because that involves a lot of conflict and leadership. So, but not recommended as, as to high wages. But yes, this is sort of a good toolkit to, if you think of skills, what skills you have and recombinations, you can think of new careers. You can think of, oh, could I be a deep sea diver? Could I do this? Could I do that? 
Uh, so those, those are some options to consider. This one is interesting, stepping stones. Now, occasionally you'll find with a new vacancy that this is kind of the one you really, really want. And I was once lucky enough to do that. And I only had to do two job applications in that job hunt and I got it because I really knew what I was doing. But occasionally you'll have to think, well, ultimately I want to be this and I need these skills. So if I pursue this route, I will get to that, that destination. I need those skills to get there. And a lot of people think, oh, this must be the be all and end all of all jobs. Think more what you wanna do long-term, what stepping stones are there. And last option is where do you want your story to go? And as, as you probably gathered, I, I want, really want to emphasize this, uh, the, this sort of quality, purpose, story side of things, where you want to go in life feeds into your job hunting methods and which options you pursue and will make uh, save you a lot of time and effort. So do think where you want to go. And uh, just want to uh, allude to what I said at the start, do keep an open mind uh, on options and that will help you with the alternatives. Last section, again, forgive all the fruit. Um, it's, uh, uh, this is about, uh, are broader alternatives more fruitful? So we've gone into job hunting methods, options with it in job hunting. What we're talking about is alternatives to job hunting. And it's often easy to think that you, if you're in a certain situation, you must job hunt, that that's the only path you can go down, but there are alternatives to it. The shorthand for this is throw your net on the other side. Think of what other options you could pursue that uh, may uh, get you where you want to go. And I've got three of these. So the first one is education. And ra rather serendipitously, Paul spoke about this, th this theme with, with his uh, talk on, on skills and how with education every day, is basically a bit of a school day. You, you, you don't just graduate college as this video is, is this GIF is alluding to. Uh, you, uh, you, you do need education every day of your life. And um, sorry if the screen was glitching there. I think the GIF uh, didn't, I was setting that off. Another bit of interaction. Has anyone seen this building? Does anyone know what this building is? I'll give you a clue. It's on St. All Days. And I think I won't stop sharing screen, but if you just unmute yourself and say what you think this building is, what, what's in this building? I think it's the Citizens Advice Bureau. Yes, yes, that's correct. I think that was Dominic and yes, you are, uh, you are correct. Um, this building really helped me with my experience in Oxford because the Citizens Advice Bureau is one of many gateways to adult learning. And you can learn loads of new skills in adult. You don't need to think, oh, I'm too old for this. Oh, I, I, uh, I can't learn a thing new. You can always learn something new. And adult education is key. And you'd be surprised at all the wonderful things you can learn either online or locally. And uh, that's why I wanted to focus on that. Second, uh, second broader alternative is going into business or self-employment, which is worth considering. And on this, I would like, uh, if you're considering going down this route, something I learned going into business last year was this. With um, the economy at the moment, you can imagine it's gonna bounce back some way. And these are all the different ways it could bounce back. You have the V-shape, which is the economy sinks and bounces back quickly. U-shape takes longer to recover. W, it kind of recovers and then bounces back. It has another lockdown or whatnot. It just goes uh, on as a W or you have a slow recovery, or last of all, you have this kind of slow V shape. But I'd like to make you aware of one in business that I learned that basically in, in the current situation is the type of recovery we have. So those are all very intuitive. They're all on a graph. A K-shaped one, if you're thinking in terms of graph, right away makes no sense. You think, why K? It's because there, uh, there are businesses that are going really badly at the moment and uh, things like hospitality, pubs, unfortunately are not doing well. I have a friend who's a DJ and he's having a very difficult time. But there are the ones on the upside. Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, 
has doubled his wealth in, in lockdown. Uh, most technology firms, most online firms have really, really increased. So if you're going to go into business, uh, go for the upside. The, one of the major advantages is having experimented with business is if you're doing online stuff, it's fairly cheap to set up. You just need a website and some logistics in the background. It's much cheaper than setting up a physical business or, or a shop or a, an office. Last, uh, last broader option I'd go into is not my favorite, but is worth considering is travel. Now travel can help you think of what location you want to be in. It can sort of, if, if you felt very stressed, it can let you think about that, but it is expensive. And when you do get back, you are back at square one. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's worth considering, but it's not necessarily a good alternative. The other two, uh, alternatives, broader alternatives of education and going into business are more um, long-term alternatives. So in conclusion, you, uh, there's three basic points. Use alternatives, so alternative methods, alternative options, and broader alternative options. Secondly, determine if you want quality or quantity. And remember, with quality, clear goals give you quick results. With quantity, as we're uh, as we said with words, uh, persistence is good with, with quantity. It gets you through an, an eat, eating frogs metaphorically. Last point is never give in, uh, keep going, keep fighting for it, but do use the Pareto principle. The Pareto principle will save you a lot of time. If, if you saw with that spreadsheet, it had priorities going up and going down. What you want to do is identify what is your 20% of the effort is giving you 80% of the results. If you've got a agency that comes back to you right away, gives you lots of new opportunities, pursue them. If you get an agency that you ring and get voicemails all the time, or ring and never get an answer, you email, you never hear back, don't, don't bother with them so much, but keep, keep slower tabs on them, focus on the ones that do give you lots of opportunities. And with that, that's uh, the end of the presentation. Lots of alternatives to consider. So, uh, has anyone got any questions?